human population we are in this part two we'll be looking at population structure population structure and also how managing of uh, human population size so the major um, candidate should be able to describe population structure in MEDCs more economically developed countries and less economically developed countries you should also be able to evaluate the strategies for managing human population so uh, we we'll look at population pyramids and uh, um, family planning improve healthcare and education population policies like pronatalist and antinatalist policy so once we're done we're done with this chapter so quickly um, population structure so there are certain keywords you need to understand to be able to interpret the population structure of MEDs and LEDCs effectively uh, you look at a population pyramid which is a graph which shows the population structure of a country a graph which shows the population structure of a country there we have population structure itself is the percentage of people in different age group and of different gender in a country's population population structure is the percentage of people in different age groups and different gender in a country's population then young dependent is the number or percentage of the population under the age of 16 then old dependent is the number or the percentage of population over the age over the age of 65 then economically active is um, people between the ages of 16 and 65 this is basically the working group obviously some con some people stay at school past the age of 16 while some people retire before 65 and some people work after 65 now also some people between 16 and 65 might be unemployed however when we look at economically active um, when we look at economic uh, when we look at uh, an entire population we have to look at averages so it's just based on averages because I've had students asking me a question like on uh, this somebody is above 65 is still working and the rest so it's just the average global average now dependency ratio yeah is the ratio between the amount of dependent amount of dependent that is older and young people and the economically active so the ratio between the economically act, uh, amount of dependent people and economically active will give you the dependency ratio so quickly let's look at the demographic transition model then we'll now dive into um, the uh, population pyramids so the demographic transition model uh, shows the different stages of um, different countries around the world in terms of their population growth so we have uh, birth rate death rate and we have um, population growth here so you find that here if the, the birth rate in stage one birth rate is high death rate is high and the population growth rate is low because approximately number of people that are giving birth to a number of people that die is quite high so the population will not increase then we now have uh, here in stage one before economic economic development birth and death rate are high they cancel each other out and there is little or no population growth then in stage two we are uh, with economic development living conditions and more medical technology improves both while birth and death rate falls birth rate remain high so as death rate decreases because of improvement in medical uh, technologies and, and lives entirely and death rate decreases but birth rate remain high so as a result you have that you see the population growth begins to increase exponentially then in stage three in response to rising prosperity the birth rate begins to decline even so the gap between the birth and death remain large and the population continues to increase so birth rate begins to drop death rates drop further population still increase but it's not as exponential as in stage two then in stage three in stage four eventually um birth rate falls to the same low level as death rate so as a result you find out that the growth rate also begins to drop 
because the population growth rate is now low because birth rate and death rate is the same level just like in stage one in stage one birth and death rate are high but in stage four birth and death rate are low so population is low okay so let's look at um the population pyramid of a less economically developed country uh, you see in a less economically developed country a population pyramid at the base is usually very wide because a population pyramid shows both sex so here you see female it shows sex and age group at the middle so age is at the middle so for ledc's what you have is less baby girls than baby boys but boys have higher infant mortality rate <coughs> sorry so it has a wide base shows that large number of children are born so you find out that there is high birth rate in early disease that is why it has a wide base now um because um indent slow higher death rate than normal so things like war famine disease or true emigration that is why at this stage as it moves up you find out that the bars each of the bars decreases because the number of people reduces uh, as they are being born they tend to migrate out of that particular location for a better life or because of war famine and disease there is high death rate within uh, early disease so it gives a, a proper pyramid shape then you find out that uh, people above the age of um, 65 above um, 70 above it shows also that they have low life expectancy because uh, people don't live really above uh, 75 80 years that is why you find out that the bars here are quite really small so it has a narrow shape at the top which shows a low proportion of people living into old age and a high death rate so this is what it means and here you have young dependent between the age of 0 to 16 approximately is the young dependent then from 16 up to 65 here is the economically active then from 65 above is old dependent population so advantages and disadvantages of having a youthful population so because there is high birth rate you find that that less economically developed country have a really high amount of young dependent uh, youthful population so there is advantage for having that and there is also disadvantage so some of the advantage include it provides a large and cheap workforce there's enough people to work within the industry uh, and it, it provides a growing market for manufactured product and provide a large tax base for the country these are the advantages but and the disadvantages it puts strain on education and health services so education is actually strain if you go to most of these LEDs uh, some schools don't uh, have a very high population that the amount of infrastructure there is not even enough for the number of students then it puts strains on food supply so as a result there can be um, food scarcity uh, within those areas uh, it puts strains on availability of accommodation so housing issues people begins to live under the bridge and uh, within and those locations so they don't really have a good uh, accommodation so lack of available jobs in the future so there is high possibility of having um, problem with um, job uh, availability of job and uh, job opportunities so let's look at annotating an medc population pyramid so for more economically developed countries you find that that uh, they have a low birth rate so uh, as a result they have a narrow base so you find out that um, the population of kids being born is quite low so less baby girls than baby boys but boys have a higher infant mortality rates than girls generally so take note of that and girls tend to live older longer than boys so if you look at the life expectancy in more economical level countries it is from 85 years and above so they have a very high um, they have a very high life expectancy then uh, indent uh, shows that uh, higher death rate higher 
death rates than normal war famine disease or through emigration this is not supposed to be here now the death rate is quite low within uh, more economically developed countries so this i didn't go through this quickly before death rate it's not supposed to be there so uh it bought these bulges here show either a period of immigration or a baby boom years before so these bulges this increase in economically active is as it is majorly as a result of immigrants from other countries coming in because it's more developed and there is high possibility of getting a job and better lifestyle so um, at the top you find out that a broad shape at the top shows a high proportion of people living longer so i've seen a question where they ask to just draw uh, the shape of uh, either a less economically developed country uh, population pyramid or a more so in a less economically developed country you can draw something like this because it has actually a, uh, um, a pyramid shape then in more economically developed country you find out that uh, it has a low base high economically active and something like this low base high economically active and people live to a right good old age so this is for me disease and early disease so advantages and disadvantage of old dependent population that's when you have uh, a high amount of old dependents so <laughs> i need to also edit this this is not supposed to be young this is supposed to be old Dependent. So sorry about this. It's... Now, advantages. A larger proportion of aging people can add experience to the workforce. A larger proportion of old of aging people can add experience to the workforce. A, a, a growing grey market for leisure and health products because there's high amount of old people construction boom in favor of uh, retirement locations such as costa del sol in spain for old people now and disadvantage of having high old dependent population is cost of um, providing pension health care and shelter housing lead to increased tax on a proportionally small workforce many young people are employed caring for the elderly this harm a country's competitiveness since they are not producing products for export and countries like this are actually difficult to defend because most of the uh, most of them are old so they have a low um, the, uh, military force also so managing population size so what are the strategies for managing human population size first is family planning is a strategy for managing population size so family planning often means limiting the number of children as well as spacing them evenly limiting the number of children as well as spacing them evenly is family planning so it's a strategy for managing human population size so it includes things like contraceptives such as uh, condom use diaphragm or hormonal contraceptives injectable contraceptives and some of the effective are some of the effective family planning methods and um, promoting family planning is one of the way forward in curbing down population growth with its related dangers then another way of managing human population is improve health and education improvement in health care will reduce the infant mortality rate improvement in health care will reduce the infant mortality rate that the number of children that die before their age of one when infant mortality is low couples will give birth to more kids when infant mortality is low couples will give birth to more kids because there is a low probability of their survival and vice versa so education help to reduce early marriage it helps to increase the number of career women which on the long run reduces population size so the next we'll look at population policies which are also um, factors that help to cope uh, strategies for managing human population 
also is um, population policies. So we have pronatalist policy. Now, a policy that encourages couples to have more children. Now, you cannot force people to have more children. So you have to offer them incentives, incentives like free child care or even money for them to give birth to more kids. Now, antinatalist policy is a policy that attempts to reduce birth rate. This might be through better education and supply of contraceptives or through more stricter policies like China's one child policy. So um, I'm practically done with this topic, but I found I saw this in a, a past exam paper. So I just feel like I should add it to it, which is what is the impact of population growth on the environment? Impact of population growth on the environment uh, in terms of air and water pollution. Now, how does uh, this get related? How are they related? So you see, if there is increase in population, in the number of population, you have to there have to be increase in power stations to provide electricity for the increasing population. And that can also lead to increase in traffic. Uh, more industries will develop to provide the needs for this increasing population. So all these provide um, uh, more people use wood, coal and dung from, for fuel. All these activities put what smoke particles and gas particles like carbon dioxide into air which eventually lead to air pollution so take note if you ask a question like this then in the case of water pollution more rubbish not collected we get into water courses sewage system will be unable to cope with increased population many slum dwellers do not have toilet so sewage usually not treated human and animal defecate in water courses and industrial discharge waste into water. So all these uh, increases due to increase in human population and eventually lead to increase in water pollution. So, and thank you. Um, we'll now look into um, chapter nine um, uh, swiftly.